Hey folks, um, the, those that are coming in, filing in, thank you so much for being here. We're going to give people a couple minutes to, um, to get situated and to come in. Um, and in the meantime, um, please be, just make sure you know where your microphone is, um, locate the chat feature, we'll be using that. Um, you're welcome to uh, start, you know, throwing up questions or um, other things in the chat. And then if, if you feel comfortable, we'd love to see video. Um, if you have the technical capabilities and you're prepared for that, um, we're really excited to start to put faces with names and we want to be able to, um, you know, recognize people on campus and all of that. So if you do have video capability, please, uh, please stream. So I'm, at this point, I'm definitely regretting not having some sort of music in the background. I need to make make a note <laughs> for future Zoom calls. It would be a, way better to have. You guys want to crowdsource a playlist for next time? And put put a, a recommended song in the in the chat, and we'll uh, make note of it. I think Campus Life actually has a whole playlist uh, for first year students, which I'm really excited to tune into. Wow. All right. Welcome, folks. Um, so we are just about ready to get started. Um, we have some people still filing in through the waiting room. Um, so as you're getting situated, make sure you um, just are on mute to start with, um, but we will have opportunities for you guys to hop off mute. We definitely want to get to know you. Um, make sure you know where the chat uh, feature is and, um, and the, the current um, prompt is if you have a, a song that you would like to recommend for a future playlist so we don't have silence upon entering. Um, you're welcome to put that in the chat. And thanks, Brianna, for getting us started with that. Um, <laughs> if you have video capabilities and you're comfortable, we'd love to see your faces. Um, we really are hoping for this to be an interactive um, session where we actually get to start to know you guys and, and you guys can start to get to know um, us as well um, and each other. So um, yeah. All right, with that, we are going to go ahead and get started. All right, so welcome to um, our virtual campus sustainability tour. Um, we are, like I said, so excited to see you all and to welcome you to the sustainability community. Um, I'm Cassie Hage. I'm the Assistant Director of the Office of Sustainability. And um, Clara, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, everyone. I'm Clara, and I also work at the Office of Sustainability. Um, and so we are um, two people on a, on a team of seven or so uh, who work on sustainability issues across campus. Um, so um, on the right side of the screen there, you can see uh, Michelle, Phil, Alicia, Raylisha, and, and Claire. Um, and uh, as we kind of get to, to know you more and hopefully you'll become, um, you'll interact with the Office of Sustainability um, and you might interact with any of us at any given time. But um, Clara and I tend to be more of the like outreach folks um, and, and are often kind of the, um, maybe the first people that you guys would meet, obviously, as you are on this, this call. So um, the Office of Sustainability is um, at an, an administrative office. And we work at the intersection of, um, of staff, faculty, and students. And we work across 
all WashU campuses, all schools, and we're really looking at um, operational sustainability, so how the, the campus runs and looking at things like waste and water and food systems and trying to optimize those for sustainability. And then we also look at um, how we can really foster sustainability culture. Um, the four um, students who are on the call with us are, um, have intersected with our office in different ways. Um, and uh, all of them have been interns with the Office of Sustainability. And so we definitely want you guys all to know that we do have a, um, a very robust internship program. Um, and that might be something that you're interested in pursuing in the future. Um, so I'm gonna let you guys introduce yourself. Brianna, do you wanna get started? Yes, hello, Brianna, she, they, really excited to be here. Um, I'm a student associate with the Office of Sustainability. I'm mean, going to actually met the Office of Sustainability through something called the WashU College Prep Program. It's a program that WashU puts on for low income and first gen college students while they're in high school in the St. Louis area. And so I was super lucky because the summer before the fall, before my uh, freshman year, I got to spend a ton of time getting to know people at the OOS and just getting oriented with campus. Um, and I'm still a new intern today. I'm an, also an organizer with Sunrise STL. Sunrise is a national climate justice org, but we have a local chapter in St. Louis that's very heavily populated by WashU students. So if you're really interested in climate justice and something like the Green New Deal, uh, we'd love to have you at one of our meetings. All right, Sophia, we'll just go right down the line, but Sophia, please hop on. Good. Hi, I'm Sophia. I'm a rising senior. I'm a double major in finance and economic strategy in the business school. Uh, one of the things that I love about WashU is though I'm getting a business degree, I've had the opportunity to tailor my college experience to sustainability and renewable energy, both through classwork by taking a bunch of classes in environmental policy, law, and anthropology, but also being really involved on campus. Uh, my sophomore year, I interned for the Office of Sustainability to build a program called the Renewable Energy Student Engagement Team Reset. Uh, the goal was giving students an, uh, education and experience in the renewable energy world. That program went really well, and it's now a three credit class you can take at WashU. Uh, I'm also a former president and exec team member of Net Impact, a business of social and environmental impact club, uh, where I helped start uh, an annual sustainability career fair with the goal of helping students realize that thinking green can be a whole career, it doesn't just have to be um, a hobby. This last summer, I interned at Anheuser-Busch in their sustainability department, uh, working on glass recycling and also designing uh, the, their supply chain carbon reduction program through 2022. Uh, I'll throw in a fun fact, because why not? Um, I'm getting ready to scale South Sister, which is a mountain here in Oregon. Um, we're super blessed to have mountains out here. I'm nervous, but excited. So we'll see how that goes. All right, Mandy. Hi everyone, my name is Mandy, she, her pronouns. Uh, I am a waste reduction and diversion associate for the Office of Sustainability. Um, I got involved uh, in sustainability on campus by being an eco rep for my dorm. Um, and Alexis was the director then, and then I uh, got involved on campus doing student sustainability board where I helped lead a, a couple of projects um, and served as exec. I currently serve as the um, compost co-leader for the WashU Green Ambassadors um, for the compost program in the South 40. Um, I am a student environmental council exec with Alexis, um, who is a president, and we are like the green umbrella group that um, kind of helps connect and advertise and advocate for our all our green student groups on campus. Um, yeah. Oh, I'm also an environmental uh, biology and environmental analysis major and a rising junior, sorry. <laughs> all right, Alexis. Hey everyone, I'm Alexis. I'm a rising senior studying environmental biology. Um, Mandy and I actually have a lot of overlap. I was also an eco rep, which is essentially the sort of point person to make your event sustainable for each individual residential hall. Um, from there, I was the South 40 sustainability chair, which is just the person that oversees the individual eco reps. Um, I've also served, I've also worked with the Washington Green Ambassadors. I was a director 
um, at one point, and I was an intern for the Ooze two summers ago, and last, or last summer and this summer. And I am now the president of the Student Environmental Council, which Mandy just uh, spoke about. All right, so now we want to know who you guys are. Um, so if you could, if we could start by um, just typing in the chat where you're calling in from or, or where you call home. All right, we have already two people calling from New Jersey, someone from Alaska, Oregon, California, Maryland, more people from New Jersey, San Francisco Bay Area, Texas, Philadelphia, more Texas, Missouri, Atlanta. Who am I forgetting? That covers coast to coast. St. Louis, but I'm from California. That's Alexis. Love it. Nice. Thanks, everyone. Um, so now we're going to launch a poll, a Zoom poll, and um, the question is, what school are you in? So um, as you, you probably know, WashU has seven different schools. Um, not all of them are, um, uh, most of them are, only some of them are undergrad and grad, um, so we left the other ones out, but let's see where folks are from. A lot of arts and sciences. That's pretty typical. No engineers. We have 85% of the voting. Um, and we, so in our internship program and, and in general, but specifically in our internship program, we do work with school um, students from across all the different schools, which is um, really, um, really exciting to work with a bunch of different people with different expertise. Can you guys see the results? Okay, awesome. All right. Next poll, um, will you be attending WashU in person or will you be virtual this semester? All right, some of both. Very interesting. This is def definitely a um, whole new world for us. So um, we're really, we're, we are thinking of ways that we can engage people um, both virtually and in person. A lot of what we're talking about today is going to be the physical um, environment of campus. And so this can be good both um, if you're about ready to come and are going to be exploring these places. But it, it can also be a good way to kind of feel like you're at campus um, because you're able to be to see these places even when you're um, not present. Um, and then also, so we do a lot of programming, um, some that we that our partners lead uh, throughout the year, um, and most of that's going to be online this year. So we do invite everybody to tune into that, um, even if you're not physically on campus. Okay. So now we're gonna try doing a word cloud, um, an, an, another more form of um, engagement. So um, the question is, why do you care about sustainability? What does sustainability mean to you? And... Yeah, so for this one, as, as Cassie said, it's gonna be a word cloud. So for these two work, uh, basically you have to choose one word. Um, so for instance, uh, a response like protect the environment or protect people wouldn't really work. Rather, you could choose the, the word environment or the word people or protection. However, for words like climate change, which obviously belong together, you can submit that. Um, also, all of you has up to three submission. Um, and yeah, we should be able to see the, the word cloud building in front of us. Um, let's see, there we go. So um, to, to submit your vote, uh, you would have to text uh, your response to this number, 484-275-2691, or go online to swiftpolling.com and enter this number here, 5437. 
Um, and as you submit responses, we should start seeing a, a word, a cloud of words building in front of us. And um, student panelists, feel free to participate and submit some words here. Longevity, I like that. So the more people submit the same word, the bigger the words are, as you probably got already. <laughs> Peace, justice, forever, renewable energy, preservation, health, conservation. Outdoors, crucial. Responsibility, that's a good one. Urgency. House responsibility, future. This definitely works better when we have a lot of submission. Cassie and I tried it earlier and we had like two words battling for the first place. <laughs> this is looking great. So witnessing this um, cloud of words is really kind of an illustration of uh, the diversity of reasons why we care about the environment and, and sustainability and, and people. Um, and it really shows that this field is uh, pluridisciplinary and, and covers areas that are super diverse. Um, so thanks everyone for participating and I'll keep that uh, on, my, on my screen and take a screenshot to be reminded of why we all care about that. Uh, and Cassie, feel free to, to take it over from there. All right. Um, so we are going to take a tour. Let's see. Get this pulled up. And then the neat thing about this tour is that um, it's actually available all the time on our website. So um, if you, we're, we're only going to be going through some of the highlights. Um, all of these things are really wonderful, but these are some of our favorites and they're some of the ones that we think might be um, most uh, interesting to you all as first year students. Um, but we would encourage you guys to um, check out the full tour at a later time. Um, or if you see something that catches your eye and after this, when we do Q&A, you want to learn more about it, uh, feel free to, to ask at that point. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, this is really looking at um, kind of the, the breadth of um, ways that WashU has incorporated sustainability over the last, most of it's um, within the last 10 or so years that I think things have really um, been institutionalized. Um, and we have, we've actually redone this tour recently to really um, focus on and include the, um, the new East End um, development, which might not seem like a, a big deal to you all if, um, if you haven't seen Washi's front door before, um, before this year, but it is a massive, massive um, uh, transformation that uh, was pretty disruptive for the last two years, but um, an amazing change has, has happened. And sustainability was really a core principle when they, um, from the very first moment when they were envisioning what this could be, and then they really did continue that theme throughout the design and build phases. Um, and now it's a great learning tool for us to pass along. Um, so this tour was actually created by a student intern in our office utilizing um, uh, Esri's GIS um, story map program. Um, so on the right, you'll get, you'll see um, campus. And so this is a really good way to start to orient yourself of where things are. Um, so um, Skinker Boulevard is the easternmost border of the main campus. And just beyond that is Forest Park, which is an amazing place to visit. And it is so great that it's just across, um, across Skinker Forest. Um, and so we are actually going to start at um, Tisch Park, and Sophia is going to tell us um, about that. 
So uh, during my three years at WashU, uh, as Cassie mentioned, the East End went from this construction pit to a beautiful new campus space for hanging out and studying. Uh, this is Tisch Park. Really recommend that um, y'all check it out if you're on campus. Uh, it, it's only been around for a year, uh, but I've already, you know, done multiple readings and assignments on the outdoor furniture and um, have appreciated and maybe slashed my friends with the beautiful fountains that are there. Uh, not only is it super usable um, and gorgeous, uh, it was designed and built sustainably as well uh, with features like rain gardens, pervious pavement, and hundreds of trees. Uh, before construction began, uh, many of the existing bushes, shrubs, trees were uh, carefully transplanted across main campus. Um, and the beloved century old oaks uh, that were felled during the um, demolition were actually reclaimed and milled into lumber. Uh, Schnook Pavilion, or as some students call it, Spav, which is our next stop, <laughs> um, used some of that lumber for furniture. Um, I must admit, I've never heard Spav before, but I'll, I'll, I'll incorporate that one into my vocabulary. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fun one. Uh, all right, Clara, can you tell us more about Shbab? Shbab? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, so this is Shbab. I don't see it on the screen okay. yet, but it's probably going to show up soon. Um, all the people, at least in the department, the, the facilities department, call it one of the, the glass boxes on campus because it's basically only glass building. Um, and it's actually the house of the Office of Sustainability, uh, but that's not the only reason that makes that building super awesome, uh, because that building is also uh, the home of the Environmental Studies program, who share the same floor as us. Uh, on the first floor of this building is also the Parkside Cafe, uh, which offers delicious food and also compost collection. Uh, you can see both outdoor and indoor. Um, and on the lower level of the Schnur Pavilion, there is the Active Commuter Hub, which is a space that offers showers, lockers, and a bike parts vending machine for everyone who commutes actively uh, to campus, or even who wants to exercise uh, during the day and need to, a place to shower. Uh, the the SHPAV is also, uh, as all of the buildings on the, the new buildings on the East End, it's a green building. Uh, it's actually expected to receive the highest level uh, of LEED certification, and LEED stands for uh, Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design. Um, and uh, all the, the water outlets actually have low flow fixture, which allows the building to save uh, more than 75,000 gallons of water every year, which is huge. Um, and the, the roof will soon welcome some solar panels, which will uh, decrease the energy cost by 17% in the building. Um, you definitely have to check it out for those who will be on campus soon. All right. And next, Mandy, tell us about Weil Hall. Weil is a beautiful new front door to the Sam Fox School of Design and Visual Arts, uh, featuring a state-of-the-art digital fabrication studio nested among uh, the graduate architecture uh, studio desks, MFA studios, and faculty offices. Uh, and pictured here is the must-see Kuhner Court, uh, in my opinion. Um, the best study and photo op place at WashU uh, for all students. And this is a 30 foot living green wall and it's a beautiful example of the building's biophilic design elements that integrate the natural and built environment that have been shown to lessen room noise and even improve mental health. Um, and it's very user friendly. Well, the, the plant wall is not, but the space is very user friendly. Um, and at the top, you will see a shade canopy over the study area that filters daylight to reduce glare, and there are aluminum fins on the exterior glass walls um, that provide, um, are able to provide the building shade uh, while min to minimize energy use for cooling while letting in a lot of natural light. Awesome. It makes me want to go visit it like right now. Um, all right, Alexis, tell us about the Welcome Courtyard, my, my personal favorite. 
All right, well, the Welcome Courtyard, along with all the other stops we've seen so far, was one of the new spots that was built with the East End Renovation Project. And it's an open natural courtyard connecting the art school and the Welcome Center slash financial aid office and the East End parking garage. And it brings a sense of openness to the university's front door. It's a space with great lighting and a sense of openness if you just need to escape and relax for a bit without leaving the campus. The courtyard has some really cool features, but I think one of the ones that sticks out the most and is one of my favorites is that it features one of the trees from the original Oak Alley that once led to Brookings Hall. Um, and so this one is being allowed to naturally decay to provide nutrients to the earth and create a natural habitat and um, promote that natural environment. So whether you just need a break or a place to study, a place to eat lunch um, or just sit, there's benches, there's tables, um, or if you just want to watch the tree slowly decay, this is a great place to check out. I think few WashU students have enough time to watch a tree decay, but... <laughs> You'd be surprised the way people like to procrastinate. <laughs> All right. Um, so as I mentioned, this courtyard is one of my favorite places, and but it leads to um, one of the most unexpected interesting places. Um, I'm not usually a proponent of um, underground or parking in parking spaces in general, but the underground parking garage that was created as um, part of this project is amazing. Um, so it's located underground underneath Fish Park. The garage includes electric car charging stations. It has preferred spaces for carpoolers. Um, and it also has a stop for the campus circulator. So it's pretty easy to get to um, if you're coming from the 40 or the or main campus. Um, the first thing you'll notice about this garage is the high ceilings and natural light. So it's very open. Sorry. I see yeah. we, we, we just see the welcome courtyard on your screen. It's, I was wait, building up to the big reveal. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. There it is. So if you can see, there's a person here for reference, and these these ceilings are huge. Um, and the the reason for this is because um, it was designed with the future in mind and adaptable for use. So um, in a future that doesn't involve cars, which is hopefully sooner rather than later, um, this space can be repurposed for classrooms or um, other um, other uses, um, and there'll be plenty of room to run dock work and that sort of thing. So really cool story there. Um, the other neat thing is that um, the Tisch Park is essentially a green roof. Um, so they had to design this really um, interesting mix of uh, soils in order to be um, to drain well, because you don't want a bunch of water sitting on top of a, a built structure, as you can imagine, that might cause some problems. Um, so it has to drain really well, but also has to support the vegetation on top. Um, and this is designed so that um, so that the storm water that comes down in a, in a large storm can be um, held on site rather than whisked away and become a problem for the sewage system. Um, so it's a really awesome green infrastructure um, feature. And I, I think to me, which is why I'm so excited about it, is that it's um, this hiding parking infrastructure is a strategy that um, has continued to grow. So we have another one, another underground parking garage on campus. And it's a way that we can continue to grow as a campus, even though we're landlocked. Um, it also is one of these win-win sustainability solutions where um, what was a hard dark surface that could would cause things like um, pedestrian safety challenges stormwater runoff and the urban heat island effect and it's shifted it into um, a space of leisure and um, socialization and it retains the, the stormwater on site creates habitat and um, there's tons of native planting so um, so there's all this biodiversity instead of a blacktop Oh, it also sequesters um, carbon dioxide too. So, a great feature. <laughs> okay, Brianna, tell us um, about the Hillman Hall landscape. Yeah, so one thing I love about the Hillman landscape is that it's a very, very intentional use of space. Um, so when you're looking at the front doors to the very left, um, it's going to be something called the Booter Gathering Circle. And the Booter Gathering, Gathering Circle is connected to the um, Booter Center for American Indian Studies. 
Um, and so the space is made out of reclaimed wood. It has lots of native plants and it's just a place for um, students to reflect um, on everything um, in terms of like indigenous people um, and their contributions to our society. Um, and so another cool thing about the Hillman landscape is uh, that it has a water retention basin. So right next um, to the building, like you'll, if you look at the side of the building, there's kind of like an intricate water um, system. And that's just to um, keep the landscape really secure um, and taken care of. Um, and there's also a rain garden um, with a carefully curated selection of plants that can withstand both dry and very wet conditions. So like I said, a very intentional use of space. Um, and it's really beautiful. Right? So I'd suggest checking it out if you are gonna be on campus. All right, so we're gonna pause really quick to see if there are any questions so far, if you wanna um, put them in the chat or um, hop off of mute. Um, if you have any questions on anything you've seen. There is no question in the, in the chat. Ten more seconds of uncom uncomfortable silence. See if anyone wants to speak up. Otherwise, we'll move on. All right, um, Brianna, can you continue on with um, Whispers Cafe Sustainability Dashboard? Yes. So, um, the Sustainability Dashboard in Whispers Cafe is actually um, one of two dashboards on campus. The other one is near the Office of Sustainability on the second floor of the Snook Pavilion. Um, and it's just a great resource for all things sustainability, particularly a great resource for students that want to look into um, pursuing academic careers and sustainability. Um, it has a list of all the majors and minors and certificates a person can get that relate to sustainability. Um, so I would recommend checking that out. Um, and then it's also, it has kind of a fun component, something called the test your knowledge quiz um, with just some fun questions about climate change um, and sustainability, et cetera. Uh, but yeah, so definitely check out the sustainability dashboard. It's a really great resource. And Brianna. <laughs> oh, yes, I did that part. Right. Uh, when I worked as an intern uh, last summer, I helped curate some of the resources for the sustainability dashboard. And it was really interesting um, because I got to see how many sustainability groups, student groups we have on campus. Um, so yeah, lots of work and lots of information on those dashboards. <laughs> Brianna always needs a little bit of help by uh, tuning her own horn. So I'm glad we got that in there. <laughs> Um, all right, Sophia, please tell us about the Centennial Greenway. I'd be happy to. So a greenway is a trail or road set aside for recreational use or environmental protection. Um, and we're super lucky to have a greenway that re weaves right through campus. Uh, last year, I lived in a student housing on the loop. So I would take uh, the greenway every day to and from campus. Uh, and especially since the bridge was renovated, it's a really nice walk and uh, I would look forward to my commute every day. Uh, the Greenway is one of many pathways on campus that has separate paths for biking uh, and walking, so that way it's safer and more comfortable for everyone. Uh, as COVID restrictions allow, uh, I would definitely recommend biking the Centennial Greenway as a way to get to know uh, St. Louis and the surrounding community. Hey, um, Alexis, how about Snow Way Hill Meadow? Yeah, the Snow Way Hill Meadow is one of the hidden gems on campus that brings a little bit of a wild back. Um, it was installed in 2011 and it's managed as a prairie rather than a more manicured landscape like the other green spaces that you'll see on campus. It features 35 wildflower and grass species and 47 shrub species. And if you enjoy bird watching, you can also stop by and watch the birds gather to eat the wildflower seeds. Uh, in addition, the WashU Beekeeper student group normally maintains about one to two beehives here. Um, so if that's something that just piqued your interest, that's some, something that you can look forward to in the fall. Maybe not in the fall, but in your time at WashU at least. Um, and it's located closer to the village, which is traditionally where the upperclassmen live. So if you live on the South 40, you may not see it on your everyday commutes across campus. But if you ever find yourself in the area, you should definitely check it out. It's really a short walk away from the South 40. And if you're already in the village, you can stop by and get some good food 
um, that you can't always get at Bears Den. So really just make the most of that trip. So the funny thing about this is when we were preparing about for the tour, um, none of the students <laughs> that, that are on the panel have ever, they probably passed it, but they didn't really know it existed. So um, this is one of those examples of a truly a hidden gem um, that you will now know about and can enjoy as, um, as you now have some insider knowledge. All right, Sophia, um, please tell us about the Recreation Center. Oh boy, I will try to keep this short and not nerd out too much, but you guys, your new gym has really, really cool um, green building design. So not only is it uh, LEED Platinum certified, but also 22% of the electricity from this whole building comes from that beautiful array of 5,100 solar panels. Uh, that installation actually made WASHI one of the biggest on-site solar energy producers in St. Louis. Uh, so super exciting. Uh, for me, seeing this installation completed in all its glory is, um, it's really hard to describe how cool it is because uh, I was there when construction had just started. Uh, this was back when Reset, the Renewable Energy Student Engagement Team, was in its first year and was uh, for credit um, extracurricular experience. Our, our team mission was to recommend to top university leadership how to solarize uh, South 40 dorm buildings. So of course, to do that, we had to know how solar installations work. Uh, so the president of the company developing this uh, solar array, Azimuth Energy, took the reset students up on the roof to show how panels were lifted, prepped and installed. Uh, actually, a uh, picture of Mandy, who's a former Reset team member, uh, being shown how to fly a drone at this site, uh, made the homepage of The Source, which is like a WashU um, PR newspaper. Uh, so Reset is, like I mentioned, now a three-credit class that you can take. Uh, it has a uh, classroom and project-based components. In fact, the drone that took this picture uh, was recently purchased for the Reset class. Pre-COVID, we were planning to use it for project work, um, but hopefully by the time y'all take the class, uh, you'll be able to see or use um, the drone. Another fun fact is the Rec Center hosted a 2016 presidential debate. Uh, that's right, that historic picture of Donald Trump uh, standing behind Hillary Clinton happened in this building. So a uh, fun fact for next time you're playing basketball. Awesome, um, Clara. Bears bikes. Yes, um, so Bears Bikes is a student-owned business, and as you can probably imagine from its name, uh, it provides services for bikers, uh, and that includes bike rental, uh, storage, repairs, um, and it also sells uh, at-cost helmets for $15, uh, which is a, a pretty good deal. Um, so if, if you do want to purchase a, bay, a bike though, we recommend uh, checking out the local nonprofit B Works. Uh, and they offer refurbished and uh, secondhand bikes and also parts and safety gears. Um, but um, yeah, I'm myself a, an avid biker. I used to bike to work every day. Uh, I really miss it since we are now working from home, but I, I still bike uh, quite a bit. Uh, you just need to, to plan your route and to have your, your safety gears. Um, we also have a lot more information on our website about biking around campus and, and in St. Louis in general, but Bears Bikes is a, a good place to start. Okay, Alexis, let's continue with the student businesses and swap trading post. Awesome. Well, this is my favorite student business. SWAP stands for Sharing with a Purpose, and it's a student-run reuse and exchange store on the South 40, which is easily accessible to all students. For those of you living on the 40, it's located directly under the Brookings Residential College, um, specifically the Gregg House. So if you're there, it's just one step, a few steps down the stairs, and there you are. Um, everything in the shop is 100% free, and you can take and donate as many items as you would like. There's no restriction on that. Um, they play an important role in WashU sharing economy by diverting materials from the landfill and giving these items a new life with other students, um, promoting the sharing and continued use of these goods among members of the WashU community. My freshman year, a lot of uh, my friends and I would go there and see what kind of things we could find, and some of the gems included a rice cooker, we got a fish tank that we kept on our floor for a year, and then we never got around to having a fish. 
but we filled up the tank. Um, and then I got a beanie there, which if anyone here is tuning in for from the West Coast as a Californian, the beanie was like my saving grace during the winter because I just could not handle it the first time. Um, so really can provide you a lot of useful things. And another cool thing about SWAP is that at the end of each year, they collect unwanted and donated items from students that are moving out in the spring and they resell them to incoming students on move-in day at an affordable price. Um, and so you can get all kinds of things like microwaves, fridges, um, shelves, a lot of things that will be helped for you as you move into your new home. And they always sell out, but this year the sale is gonna be held online and items can be picked, in, picked up during move-in. And so I would encourage you to check out their website and look for that information as to when that sale is gonna go live and get a head start on some of your shopping. Um, and I'll go ahead and drop the link to their website in the chat. Okay, um, Mandy, you're up with um, dining services and in the Bears Den. Awesome, so for those of you who will be living on the South 40, you will of course be dining in the Bears Den, better known as BD. Uh, besides having my absolute favorite uh, meat substitute, the Beyond Bratwurst, uh, our dining services also does some really great things to help make this, help us make more sustainable food choices. Um, so across campus, our main food provider, Bon Appetit, um, sources from over 40 local vendors, resulting in 22% of our food um, being locally grown, processed, or prepared. Um, our coffee meets or exceeds fair trade standards, and our egg and ground beef is certified human, humane, and our seafood is selected following the uh, Monterey Aquarium Bay Seafood Watch guidelines. Um, all of the meal stations have vegetarian options, making it super easy to have a plant-forward diet. And I encourage you guys to check out the Sustainable Food Guide uh, developed by the Office of Sustainability to learn more about the impacts of different food choices. And I will link that in a second. Um, on the waste side, you can prevent uh, you can prevent waste by opting for reusable dishes and reusable to-go boxes. Uh, disposable, compostable to-go boxes are available otherwise. Uh, when you get to campus, you'll want to familiarize yourself with our waste sorting system. Uh, compostable collection is available on the main campus areas and recycling is collected everywhere. Alexis is going to explain the new roll-in of our reusable, reusable to-go box system. Yeah, so this coming fall, we'll be introducing our Eco to Go Box program. So as you enter the school year, things will be different on campus from a normal semester, and this applies to dining too. With occupation restrictions, you may need to have many of your meals in your room or at some of the open spaces across campus, which means you're probably gonna need to rely on the to-go box options. All dining facilities offer compostable to-go boxes, and we're, but we're excited to introduce the Eco to Go program this fall. Um, this program offers students a reusable to-go box option uh, which offers in turn a more sustainable dining option for students and reduces your overall waste production. Uh, whenever possible, you should always seek out the eco to go option at dining facilities before defaulting to the compostable to go options. And once you're done, the boxes just simply need to be, uh, any food scraps need to be taken out of the boxes. They can be composted. Um, the utensils need to be thrown away or returned if they're reusables. And then the boxes just can be returned to any campus dining facility. It's gonna be super simple. Um, it is a free program, so there will be no charge to your account for using this bill box. So we're really gonna to have to rely on uh, everyone holding themselves accountable and returning the boxes and not holding onto a whole bunch in your room. But please, like, we encourage you to seek this option whenever you can. Awesome. Our office, our office works a lot with um, dining services, so um, we're really excited to uh, help share some of the great things that are coming out of the, um, that, those systems. All right, Mandy, Bernie, come quiet. Yes. So, Bernie Kumquat is a student-run organic farm on the South 40 and serves as a space for everyone to celebrate and learn about sustainable food, urban farming, and the St. Louis food industry. Um, in addition to growing delicious fresh product produce that they sell at occasional pop-up markets on campus, uh, BK hosts uh, Bernie Kumquat 
um, host annual hoedowns, fun pickling sessions, potlucks, screen printing events, and my personal favorite, House Plants 101, on how to choose and take care of your <laughs> plants. Uh, fun fact also, BK, I keep saying BK, Burning Kumquat was founded um, by a group of students in 2007 using funding from the Student Sustainability Fund. Uh, the fund allocates $5,000 annually for student-led projects and is um, hosted by the Student Sustainability Board. Awesome. All right, our last stop, Butterfly Garden. Yes, but I will say in response to Mandy, I need House Plant 101 because I cannot keep a plant alive to save my life. Um, but yes, the Butterfly Garden was created as a service project by the Women's Club of WashU to honor Elizabeth Ibby Gray Danforth, the wife of former Chancellor William H. Danforth. Um, and there are a lot of buildings named after the Danforth, so you hear that name a lot. Um, but the garden is very quiet. It's a very restorative place on campus that has lots of native trees and shrubs and a variety of flowering plants, benches and picnic tables. Um, the garden is just a really peaceful place um, that uh, attracts a lot of Midwestern butterflies. I often would pass um, the butterfly garden on my way to class in the morning and it was always so beautiful in like the late summer um, just to see all the butterflies that were there. Um, and it was recently certified as a monarch way station habitat. Um, so yeah, during the growing, growing season, it's like teeming with life. Um, and the women's club works in the garden every Tuesday morning from spring to fall. So feel free to st stop by, say hi to the volunteers or just chill and relax. All right, so that concludes the tour. Um, we've got a couple of quick polls to just see, see what you guys thought. And um, if you have any questions, go ahead and post them in the chat at the same like simultaneously. All right, the most interesting stop on the tour. Ooh, underground parking garage. I swayed you guys. <laughs> cool. It also has like a very, it has like a glass elevator that goes up, very like Hunger Game-esque, very cool. <laughs> I never made that connection, thank you. Um, it's a lot more pleasant when you come out of it than if you just got thrown into the Hunger Games though. <laughs> It's kind of on your games though, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. And what was, what's the place that you're going to go check out? Um, for those of you who are coming to campus, um, what is the place that you're going to go check out first? Awesome. So some of you will be hanging out with Brianna and others with, uh, with Mandy. <laughs> so cool. All right, well, it's good to see that there's um, some interest in quite a few of our favorite spots. So thanks for answering that. Um, all right, so now we are going to um, chat with our panelists. So um, I've got a couple of starter questions. Um, just in case um, you guys don't chime in. But as I said before, feel free to, um, to drop a question in the chat or you're also welcome at this point to come off mute. We'd love to um, see you and hear you um, and hear your questions. And uh, Cassie, there are a couple of questions uh, that came through the chat earlier that I, I just want to make sure we address, even though we don't have really clear responses at this point. Uh, one of them was, will interactive public resources such as the sustainability dashboard um, will be accessible? Um, so 
we don't really know yet um, but ideally if that if that's happening we would have some increased uh, disinfection practices that we would have to put in place and probably also a hand sanitizer dispenser right next to it uh, so if we can do that we can probably do it but but we are not sure yet uh, and also related question was about so how will covid restriction uh, restrict or enhance our access to these locations and uh, Brianna already responded that uh, this restriction will soon be released by WashU. Uh, my understanding is that um, outdoor spaces will be accessible as long as you respect the, the restriction of staying six feet apart, wearing a mask if you are uh, surrounded with people, etc. And I believe there will be also uh, some signage on the ground if, if the restrictions are, are different based on the, the space. Um, Cassie, do you want to add to that? No. Okay. Another question was, uh, can we find the posting of the recording of this Zoom? Yes, uh, we are recording right now and we will be putting the, the link to the recording and maybe also the slides and more information on our website. And towards the end of the, the webinar, too, you will be able to submit your email address in a form that we will be sending you all. And we can this way follow up to, um, with all the materials we refer during the presentation because we get that a lot. Uh, so don't worry if you didn't take super detailed notes. Um, we will be following up with all of that. And I guess if there is no one coming up with more questions, the, the starter question for our student panelists was, what's your personal favorite spot on campus? We may have covered it, we may have not. Brianna, go for it. Um, I'd have to say the CDI, it's in the dock and the couches are really comfy. Uh, the CDI stands for the Center for Diversity and Inclusion. It's just a really fun place. And I also love um, Shpav, or at least that's how I pronounce it. Um, I love like being in the intern space on the second floor and getting to see like all over campus. We love having you here. <laughs> Alexis, did you want to share something? Yeah. Um, yeah, one of my favorite spots is also the CDI. I used to work there, and it's just like a great place to hang out in the duck. And it's somewhere that I never really have to struggle for seating, which uh, the duck is like the main sort of dining area on campus. So it can be kind of hard sometimes. Um, but another one of my favorite spots is like at the top of Brookings Hall in the steps where you can just like look out onto the East End. Um, the East End really is really beautiful, and it's one of my favorite places on campus. So like being able to look down on it is just really cool. Thanks guys, I totally agree. Uh, how about, um, what's your favorite thing to do in St. Louis? Sophia? Um, I don't know if it's like a huge, you know, thing to do in St. Louis, but one of the things that I miss at least um, is, uh, going for ice cream with friends and around campus, there are a lot of really good ice cream spots. My favorite is uh, Clementine's. They're really good. They have, um, uh, it's like artisanal ice cream with like really interesting flavors and they've definitely got like a punk vibe going on. It's really cool. It's really great. I would really recommend it if they're, if they're open. They have the best vegan like chocolate coconut ice cream it's so good that's my favorite it's me so too <laughs> <laughs> brianna um i was gonna say the grove it's similar to the loop and it's not too far from campus there are just like a ton of small businesses um with like a really like diverse range of interests there love it yeah <laughs> um i think we can go around everyone we haven't heard from Mandy and Alexis on this one, is that right? Yeah. Um, one of my friends and I, we really like to just like go on like sunset kind of drives and uh, drive through all the like different neighborhoods. Um, that's always like really cool to just like play some music and have the windows down and just uh, go through. I also like to go to Forest Park and just like chill on Art Hill. Um, it overlooks like the Grand Basin. Um, so once you get to campus, like I would definitely recommend like taking a walk through Forest Park. It's 
a really beautiful place to hang out. It can be really hot depending on what time you go, but it's still worth it. Yeah, and he has a sort of... Sorry, Mandy, go ahead. Oh, no, you're good. I was just saying that's super wholesome. I like it. <laughs> and it has a lot of water feature to splash if it's actually really hot. Oh, and you yeah. can also bag it. Yeah, there's like uh, like paddle boarding. Not, is it called paddle, paddle boating? There's paddle boating on the, the, the park, which I love. Yes, is that what yeah. they're called? Yeah. yeah. And you can like go under the water fountain and get like drenched and then it's like really hot and then it just dries off and it's really nice. Um, I would say I really like going to the Botanical Garden, uh, which is in Forest Park in the zoo, which is free, um, and visiting like little local restaurants. It's super fun. Um, yeah. Yeah, there is a program called the, the Green Dining Alliance uh, that allows you to locate um, local restaurants that have sustainability practices across the board and they also usually taste really amazing and there is a lot in the loop and right around campus. Um, Sophia, do you want to add something? Yeah, just one more thing um, on the topic of Forest Park. Um, for, for those of you coming to campus, uh, not only is there a free zoo in Forest Park, but there's also a free art museum so very much take advantage of that like as <laughs> your first year don't don't wait uh to go see them because they're really cool uh it's a if they're open and safe like it's a really good study break so like get your friends go walk over to the zoo for a few hours super recommend it and the zoo is huge so like you can even make multiple days out of that trip if you want to History Museum and the Science Center are also in Forest Park and are also free. Yes, we love free things. <laughs> so sadly, we are four minutes away from the end of our time together. Uh, last call for questions for our amazing panel of students. And I guess one closing question for our students. Uh, what is an advice um, that you want to give to first year students or something you wish you had known as a first year student that you want to share with the group? I can go. Okay, okay well, um, I think that as a new body of students, you bring a lot of like great ideas to this campus. Um, and I would just like to say that if any of you have like any sustainability ideas or like passion projects, like don't be afraid to to like work towards that and put that um, into action because there's so many resources on this campus that can help make that into a reality. Even in my time at WashU, I've seen so many um, changes on this campus that have been born out of student initiatives. And there are a lot of resources, whether you're talking to someone at the OOS like Clara and Cassie, or if you're talking to one of the many sustainability groups, um, especially the Student Sustainability Board, which has a fund dedicated to funding uh, projects like this, I would really recommend you to pursue this um, because I think the campus can benefit a lot from the ideas that you all bring. Thank you so much. Uh, Brianna, you're next. Yeah, um, I, I just wanted to say that um, your first year can also be pretty challenging, like transitioning from high school to college. And it's really important that you're not afraid to like reach out for help um, or just to just like take a hard look at your schedule or what you have as your plan for college and realign it because you will change like so much. Like even over my first year, like I, I changed my major and, that, and my major still might change. So really just being open to change and and not being afraid to tap into all the resources that WashU has to offer. Such a good advice. Thank you. Uh, Sophia? I have two quick ones. The first one has to do with Alexis's. Um, yes, a lot of student initiatives are, a lot of initiatives are born out of student passion. So WashU is an amazing place where if you care and if you build coalitions and you identify gaps, like big opportunities will happen. And I just wanna give you a warning that you're never going to feel fully ready. You're never gonna feel like it's the perfect time or you're the perfect person for this. 
but just know that that's a sign that you're going in the right direction because meaningful impact and personal growth, you know, is challenging because it's uncomfortable. Change is uncomfortable. So uh, one thing that I wish I would have been more open to is like, be push your um, push your boundaries a little bit. Don't be afraid of discomfort. Um, let that inspire you, excite you, um, because uh, change is uncomfortable. And at the end of the day, it's it's super. It's worth every ounce of effort you put into it. And my second is a caveat to that: don't push yourself too much. <laughs> Make sure you eat well, sleep well. Please find time to relax, because I speak from personal experience when I say you can't pour from an empty cup. If you let your cup go empty, it's going to knock you over and it's going to take a while to get back up. So please remember that every ounce you invest in your well-being is an investment in your future success. So don't skip sleep. You guys, so much wisdom. Um, Mandy, do you want to close yeah. on that? Um, I definitely want to echo some of what's being said. Um, now that I say that, I forget what I'm trying to say. Um, <laughs> um, but, um, with what, um, what am I trying to say? Oh yeah. Like reaching out for resources, definitely like, um, the best, like reach out to any of us. Um, if you have any questions about how to get involved with sustainability questions about student groups, um, Alexis and I will be sending out emails to, oh, well, I guess not to everybody, but like you can sign up for the SEC newsletters and get um, updates about what's happening on campus and like ask just ask anyone for help I found that people at WashU are generally like pretty friendly and pretty helpful like I think I approached some random like junior at the time I was like a sophomore or freshman about like their major and they ended up being like the same major as me and we ended up talking about like classes and paths and stuff like don't be well actually maybe COVID maybe not maybe not approach people um, but like it like feel free to reach out to any of us um, about questions. And um, like, if you have an idea about how to do a project, like just email one of us, text one of us, stop us, like as we're walking, like, hey, like, I have a question. Like, I, you know, like, let us know. Like, we are always so excited to help people. And um, also, I think something that was really helpful for me um, like using academic resources and not being afraid to like, okay, man, I need help. Instead of like sitting there, like looking over your Calc 3 or like looking over your physics or like you're writing, you're like, dang, this is so hard. I'm stuck. Like, I don't know what to do. Like go to office hours. My best advice is do your homework during office hours. It forces you to do it on time and you get immediate feedback. And that's like, that was really helpful for me. Um, yeah. That's what, I, that's what I have to add. Thank you guys so much. Yeah, there is so much uh, wisdom and, and love and generosity in everything you said. It's, it's really heartwarming. Um, so Cassie put up the, the slide of connect with us. All of our emails are here. Um, for those who filled out the form, uh, maybe we can go to the next slide, um, which is um, a link which is both in the chat already. Cassie posted that. You can also scan this QR code here and that will bring you to this Google form where you can just put your name, email, um, and that will basically just allow us to follow up with you, share the, the recording of the webinar, slides, and the resources we have pulled on you over this past hour. Um, so thanks again for all our student panelists. You guys are awesome. We are so glad to, to work with you. And thanks also to all of you who attended. And um, Cassie, do you want to share final thoughts or? Um, so I thank you again to everyone who came and who participated. Um, I do want to put that link one more time um, in the chat, which is um, going to connect us via email. Um, if you don't fill this out, way to follow up and we definitely want to. Um, we will cut the reset um, so, so that you will have something to fend against the um, single use plastic that will be uh, unfortunately very common on campus this semester. Um, so 
uh, please do connect with us via email and remind us that you would like to get your cutlery set and um, we will connect with you on, on getting that. Um, all right, I think that wraps it up. So again, thank you and we're gonna go ahead and wrap it up. All right.